about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants So there is a systemic dimension to the operation of the church. And God himself designed the victory of the church to be hinged on systems. Remember when the army in... Ezekiel 37 would come back to life. The first thing that came back was the structure. Not the flesh. The first thing that would be restored were the bones. Until bones came, then flesh would come, then life would follow. Are we together now? So, there is an economic system to this kingdom. There is a system in the kingdom that guarantees the victory and the protection of the saints. Are we together? There is a system in the kingdom that guarantees the salvation of anyone who wants to be part of it. That system was so designed that the word is near us in our hearts and in our mouth. Romans chapter 10. Is that true? It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, then believing in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will experience soteria, sozo, salvation. It's a system. No biases about it. Anybody, anywhere who will engage that system will experience the life of God. In biology, we have all kinds of systems. We have the respiratory system. We have the digestive system. And none will replace the other. Now, please understand this. There is an exact economic system built in this kingdom by which the saints prosper. If you attempt to route the blessings of God through any other medium, there will be a side effect. This is where error, imbalance, and the grave consequences of seeking for wealth outside of God's system, his modus operandi, is why people find wealth and with it they find sorrow. People find wealth with it. They find these kinds of balloon success that they go up today and down tomorrow. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. This book of the law, he said, shall not depart from out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then he says, then you will make your way prosperous, not God, and you will have good success. Hallelujah. There is an economic system of the kingdom. And please follow me patiently as we run through this system of the kingdom. There are certain, certain truths that are foundational when it has to do with wealth and abundance. And let me just state them. I hope I'm not boring you. Praise the Lord. Number one. The desire to access the wealth and the abundance of the kingdom has nothing to do with money. It is a time redemption strategy. Please write it down. The battle for wealth is the battle for time and your soul. Two commodities. Write it down. Until you understand the mystery of time and the soul of a man, you have no business discussing finances. Because the real commodity in the realm of the spirit and in destiny is not real estate. It's not oil and gas. No, it's not your manufacturing, your products and your services. It is your time 
and your soul. This is what Satan is after. Satan is not after your money. He's not after your job. He's not after your increase. He's after your time and your soul. Because that's truly what is priceless as taught by scripture. So please look up. The Bible starts by telling us in Ephesians chapter 5. I will just run through because um, I just want to... Let's just do some housekeeping before we begin to teach. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul is mentoring the church in Ephesus. And then he's telling us to redeem time, pastor. He said to walk circumspectly. The word circumspect means accuracy. That means that you will not always have the time to guess, make mistakes and come back and correct yourself. He's saying your lifetime cannot afford you that template of living. You do not have the luxury to waste 10 years, then come back and find out I was living a lie and start again. So he's, he's talking about accuracy of time. Are we together now? Walk circumspectly. And he says that your wisdom here is demonstrated by routing a system that has dominion over time. That whoever conquers time is wise. Remember, we're discussing finances. Time. The unit of destiny is time. Destiny is a function of time. Let me tell you this. Look up, please. No matter what leaves you, if time is still there, you are not at a loss. Lose money and gain time. You did not lose. Make mistakes and have time. You will still come back. But have everything and lose time. You are finished. So says the desire of a dying man. A dying man will not ask you for more land. A dying man will not ask you for more promotion, more degrees. A dying man will plead for more time. Isaiah 38. That was the cry of Hezekiah. Remember, oh God, do I not deserve time? And God blessed him by extending time. So the real loss in a man's life is not properties. It's not money. It's time. And Satan is aware of this. Please understand. The battle for wealth is the battle for time redemption. He's telling us that we do not have all times for all things. So you must redeem time. I've said it again and again and I will continue to say it. It takes time to know God. You don't know God in a nutshell. It does not work in the pursuit of God. It takes time to know God. You don't summarize knowing God by looking at one or two verses. No. There are times that you will stay to know God and he will patiently come. As though you don't have anything to do. They that wait... On the Lord. Not they that wants to see him. Those who are ready to invest time. Are you getting what we are saying now? So we are dealing with time here. That whoever can, can have dominion over time. According to scripture is a wise man. And he says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise. Redeeming the time. Because, because the days are evil. So God interjected systems of advantage in our work so that by these mysteries of the kingdom, we will be able to exert dominion over time. Did you know that in Africa, most families did not have the opportunity to know God early? Is that true? Now, if you get born again at age 30, I hope you know based on the schedule of destiny, you are very late because that's when Jesus was fulfilling his assignment and you get born again by 30 which looks very early in africa yet you are in trouble because it will take time for you to argue about the ministry of the holy spirit until you finally receive him it will take time to argue about all of these things until you are finally filled with the Holy Ghost, then submit yourself to the mentorship of a correct pastor. If you find a wrong pastor, be ready to reverse. After 10 or 15 years, remember it's not every shepherd that is after his heart. Are we together? So I get born again at age 30. I take 10 years to 
establish myself in the knowledge of God, even if I have 120 years to live, time is already against me. There has to be something introduced into my space that can help me gain time. This is why he interjected mysteries like mercy, like favor. I will restore the years. Now listen, everybody's destiny by default is disadvantaged. You rewrite your destiny by taking advantage of these systems that have been put in the economy of God. Add it to your destiny and then you start changing things. So that God can make your, your predicament of 20 years be remedied within one year. You have gained time. Are we together? If you finish school in 2000 and you just got a job now, it's almost not a blessing. Are we together? Now, humanly speaking, I'm not being sarcastic because you know that the number of people who have been queuing up waiting for that money alone will not make it a blessing. Even if it's one million per month you are receiving. You will need a system. You will spend your remaining lifetime settling those who have been waiting impatiently for you. This is Africa we are talking about. There is, a, there, is, there is a science to our hardship. There is an explanation to it. So it is important for us to understand. We are not just dealing with money because this, is, this has been the approach to the subject of wealth and prosperity. It comes from a standpoint of lust. Most people approach the subject of wealth it's just about money and having materials uh, and then proving to people in the village and around that I'm... No, that's too small a reason to get God's attention. What about his program here? Are we together? Yes. You see, when believers are mentored and built, it is not just truth that blesses, but truth that is sequentially arranged. Truth can kill. When, if I get born again and the first message I hear is prosperity, chances are that I will be a fool and the prosperity of fools destroy them. Are we together now? I'm, I just get born again and my first sermon is prosperity. I have not died to the flesh. And so, I will, I will view the subject of wealth from the lens of my corrupt heart and it will destroy me. So, there are other truths that must precede that to make the subject of prosperity a blessing. So, let me just clarify straight up. We are not just randomly talking about an obsession for more just because we hate poverty. No. No. There is a better kingdom drive to the things that we are teaching. When you understand the kingdom and you understand what I am teaching, um, I, I'm sorry to be a bit harsh, but it becomes wicked to remain poor. When you understand this, being poor becomes your final proof that you are not interested in God's program. This is more than just having enough. So time circumspectly as wise not as unwise redeeming what time listen it takes time to raise children and you cannot really raise children by proxy i hope you know that when your child begins to call you uncle because you wake up early in the morning you sleep late at night and only to eat the bread of sorrow they are now left under the mentorship of someone that may not sustain the kingdom values you want them to have. Multiply this kind of tragedy for 15 years, your child has become something you almost cannot correct. Are we together? It takes time to build a healthy relationship with your husband and your wife. If the only time you meet is during weekends or when you are settling quarrels, that marriage is already broken. You need time to pray. Many people cannot pray because the awareness, you hear people say no time, no time. And that's exactly what the devil likes. Listen, Satan knows that once you have time, you are dangerous. Satan fears anyone who has time. 
because he knows what God can do with your time. So he finds a way to do something to your time. So Satan conducted a research himself and found out what do men do with their time on earth. And he found out that the greatest investment of our time is to get money. That's why money became a subject of interest. It was never about money. He conducted a research and found out that most believers will give their time in exchange for money. Are we together? Time. And there's nothing wrong with that in itself. Except for the fact that he knows that if he manipulates the economy, he will make you give more time. And because you have only 24 hours per day, the remaining time you can have to spend with God, he will do something so that you can take out of it to still try to get more money. So the Bible says it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow. Are we blessed already? The next thing I will talk about and then I will begin to teach. You cannot imagine. I honestly have not even begun. This, these are just, these are preambles. What? In all, in all honesty. In all honesty. Please sit down. We are just trying to define terminology so that we are not confused. Please sit down. Second thought that I want to communicate. I hope you understand what I'm teaching. The Bible says, look up please everybody. What shall it profit a man? So he's speaking profit now. Nigeria, the Bible is speaking profit. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses? So the soul and the world are commodities of transaction. That you can use your soul as currency to buy the world. Are we together now? The real commodity of exchange is not naira and kobo. It's not pounds and dollars. It's not oil. It's your soul. That a man can use his soul. So he says, are you really in profit when you use your soul to gain the world? This is what he's saying. And then Apostle John now begins to admonish us. We are, we are introducing the system of the kingdom now. He says, I wish above all things that ye prosper and be in hell. But, but, make sure while you prosper, your soul is not used as the collateral. What shall it profit a man? Look up, please. If he gains the whole world. Remember, there were three temptations that Satan brought to Jesus. And the last of them was, look, bow down to me. Let me make this thing easy for you. I control the cosmos. The kings of the mountains have been delegated by me. There's no need dying to route through the blood and the cross. Just bow and I will give you the keys. Listen. You get into trouble with Satan when you want to prosper even as your soul prospers. Now that's, that's where hell will fight you. You can prosper but he extracts the vitality of your soul while you increase. This is how Babylon prospers. You cannot prosper in the kingdom at the expense of your soul. And you cannot prosper outside of the kingdom with your soul being intact. The real collateral is your soul. So the battle for wealth is not just a battle for finances to have. No, 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 no. We are engaging the economic system of the kingdom because we understand that if our hope is only in this life, we are of all men most miserable. So there is a people who are making an announcement to Satan that we will both prosper and our souls will be intact. Remember Psalm 112. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, yet his righteousness endures. You declare that and you have declared war. Because you see, 
The way Satan prospers people in this system is that you bring your soul. You don't bring your soul like an occultic initiation. He uses time to get your soul. When your prayer life dies while you become a millionaire, your soul is going. Are we together? When your relationship with your wife, you become a billionaire and now find an extra room for your wife and say, you can't stay with me again. I don't trust anybody in this life, even my biological mother. You think you are being wise, but your soul is going. There are people, the richer they become, the more they are starved of sleep. They sleep with keys in their hands. You have a garage where you park your car. You have a safe where you put your money. You have boxes where you keep jewelries, but you leave your soul exposed. So the Bible says there is a system that ensures that people continue to endanger their soul while they increase. You can easily know who prospered a man by looking at his soul. When I see you increase, even as your soul prosper, you have tapped into the economic system of the kingdom. This is why we are here. You get the message now? So, the battle for wealth, you see why Satan fights this subject? It's not about money, dear people of God. It's about redeeming time, preserving our souls, and fulfilling destiny. I have watched with shock the ease with which people will give up God and give up anything kingdom in pursuit of money. It is how Satan designed it. Because there is a she goddess called Jezebel. Jezebel being the system that describes anything antichrist. Jezebel is not just a woman. She represents a system. And notice that every time Jezebel appears, she looks for government. Jezebel always wants to sit at the seat of government. Why? Because that's where policies are made. That's where, that's the control room. The merchants of the earth, it is based on their harlotry with Jezebel that they increase. But let me show you what is going to happen shortly. Ready? Revelations 19, please. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Someone's life is shifting already. Because you see, if you, if you will access the blessings of God, you must understand his terminologies. You must understand his heart. And after these things, Revelations 19 from verse 1, I heard a great voice of much people saying, Hallelujah, salvation and glory and honor and power be unto our God, and so on and so forth. Sorry, go to verse 18, chapter 18, chapter 18 and verse 2. Ready? And he cried mightily with a voice saying, look up please. Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and is become the habitation of devils. And every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean things. Now read verse 3 if you are a Christian. Ready? want to read for all nations how many nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth how did they become rich have committed fornication with her and the merchants of the earth wax rich how through the abundance of her delicacies go to verse 9 the destruction of this system. Verse 9. Let's read together. One to read. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, alas, alas, that great city Babylon that mighty city for in one hour how long in one hour is your destruction come in one hour is your destruction come go to verse 11 we're reading and then we'll stop at 13 verse 11 
Go ahead. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth her merchandise anymore. That means Babylon is a business. Jezebel is a businesswoman. It's not just a system. They is, is economically empowered. Twelve. Now look at what she sells. These are her commodities. Hmm. Ready? The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, tyan wood, all manner of vessels of ivory, vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, tartine. Now let's read together. Cinnamon and odors and ointments. She sells anointing. She sells anointing. You can buy it from her and become an anointed man. And frankincense, continue. And wine, and oil, and flour, and wheat, read on. And beasts, and sheep, and horses, read on. And chariots, and slaves, and... Where did she get them? From those who exchanged their souls for money. What shall it profit a man when you exchange your soul and gain the whole world? Here is this goddess that sits upon a horse. The Bible says she's a businesswoman. And her products, like you have a store, shop right. You have orange, you have this. That this woman has a buffet of products. Among them, slaves. So I can sing anything and it still sells because there are people who have been subject to that system. And the Bible says she can sell the souls of men. Babylon. The souls of men. Do you know how many people have gotten prosperity at the expense of their souls? They are still alive, but they are dead. Please sit down. They are alive, but they are dead. In one hour, in one hour, a man's destruction comes because of your fraternity with Babylon. Ah. But there's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up eh, to break every chain, break every chain. That you will access, Satan will watch you rise like as though in a lift. And he checks your soul and sees that your soul is rising at the frequency of your wealth. That the more you become a millionaire, the more your knees touch the ground. And he says, by what technology has this man accessed? Where did he route this? Ah, Job said there is a path which no fowl has seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. There are virgin dimensions left for the sons of light. Men who will not bow and yet prosper. That you can be that businessman who can close your business on Tuesday to worship. And people say it's not normal. You say of course. Because my fraternity is not with Babylon. I have understood the mystery of the raven that will bring Elijah bread in Brook Cherry. Are we together? Even as your soul, that's the key word, a millionaire, even as your soul prospers, where you become the treasurer of his majesty. It makes no difference whether the wealth is in the throne room or in your account. It's all his own. And he can make demand at any time. Listen, the reason why you trust your bank is the ease of withdrawal. 
you will run away from any bank that withdrawal becomes difficult. Please sit down. We've not started talking money. You see that this wealth thing is not just about money. I must be rich. I must, that's, you see, sometimes in all fairness, when we say these things is the reason why hell does not panic at all. Because the devil knows that we will make a lot of noise and come back after three years and say, I've come. I don't mind my pride of two years before. I, I tried everything. It didn't work. I'm back. If it's the soul like Jacob, let it go. If you listen to what I show you, building on what your pastor has shown you, you will play life like a chess. It's a guarantee that I give you. It's a guarantee. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Even as your soul prospers. I needed to say this so that you don't, you don't, um, especially for those who may not be members of this church, so that you don't think, oh, there is, they are talking about money again. Let me tell you, think like that. It's a, it's a sign that there is an attack on you. The very fact that your understanding was so constructed. Because, because there are many things that resources depend on. You see, let me tell you this. I would never have a problem with poverty if it were neutral. I hate uh, poverty for one reason. It's effect in the program of God. That's it. If poverty were neutral, I would not have any problem with it. But I hate it because I have discerned the role it can play in impeding the program of God. So it becomes my enemy. Now let's deal with the economic system of the kingdom proper. There are certain truths that we must know. Number one, in God's economy, please write this down everyone. In God's economy, all wealth comes from God and belong to God. It is important for you to know this. All wealth, all blessings and all wealth comes from God. This is very basic but very powerful. That means that human beings, businesses, systems, structures are only vehicles, not sources. It's an understanding you must have. All wealth comes from God. Your job, your destiny helper, your business is only a vehicle, a funnel not an origin, not source. By the time your business becomes Abba, your source, sustainer, protector. Listen, in this kingdom, owners are rebels. We don't own things in this kingdom. Are we together now? We are given stewardship. You may freely eat of everything, but it's not yours. The prodigal son had access, but he wanted ownership. Lack started when ownership came. For as long as he was in his father's house, he had access, but he wanted it in his name. So owners are rebels. In this kingdom, we don't own things. Of course, you can say I own it in terms of the demonstration of responsibility, but then we do not own things. Owners are rebels. The earth is the Lord's and its fullness thereof, the walls, the systems, and all they that dwell therein. Owners are rebels. Ownership is what brings all kinds of sicknesses in our world today. My car, my business, my this. He said, let it not be that when you have built houses, you will say to yourself, my power and the might of my hand has given me this great wealth. But thou shalt remember. That means you can forget. Hallelujah. Look at me, please. The key to freedom is detachment from things.
For as long as you are connected to things, the stress, you listen, young people now, 20, 21, 22, have high blood pressure. What are they doing with BP? That's the consequence of violating the patterns of God. The Bible says, moreover, it is required in stewards. If it is true that you are a steward, it is required that a man be found faithful. So please understand this. In this kingdom, we have access, not ownership. Our dominion is shared dominion, not absolute dominion. Our dominion is a derivative of that which Christ has done and that which God, the, the consistency of God's abundance is where we draw from. Of his fullness, we have all received. We didn't give him some. We received. Very powerful key to know and to learn. It's amazing. You see how ownership mentality destroys people. It is my car. Don't touch this. It is my own. It is my offering, my money, my company. The side effect of ownership is that you are responsible for maintenance. When you own that child, you will source for the school fees, source for the health. Lord, this is your child. He has only passed through my womb. I will remain a faithful steward, but I will leave you to remain Abba. Be the source, be the sustainer, be the protector, be the defender. Let your jealousy continue to trail this child, trail this business because it is yours. Everybody say, all I have belongs to God. One more time, say, all I have belongs to God. Notice how difficult it is for you to say it because you suspect that the part of the all I have, I will say, will also involve your finances. And I guarantee you, God will test it. Hallelujah. So all wealth comes from God and belongs to him. Number two, all blessings, including finances. Now, please understand this. We are, we are setting the foundations now. All blessings come from God through men to men. This is the second revelation that you must have. All blessings, including financial resources, come from God, but they are routed through men to men. Please look up. Your job from God through men to men. Your increase from God through men to men. Is that, is, is, is that all right? So you need both God and men to prosper. God and men and Jesus grew. Luke chapter 2 and verse 52. Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature. He also grew in favor with God and when you have favor with God alone, you will have encounters, revelations, debt, but you will be poor, you will be delayed in life and you will be a victim. It was because Jesus had favor with men that he could command that they take another man's donkey and the man did not arrest him. You go and carry somebody's car because you are coming to church. You see that? So do you understand what I'm sharing? Let's get this straight. All wealth comes from God. Everything that I have comes from God. My job is not why I prosper. My business is not why I prosper. My business is the funnel that allows what comes from God to flow to me. So when the job is closed, he can use another funnel because the source still remains on the throne. So I don't, I, a, a man cannot sit down and say, I, I, I will terminate your job and waste your life. Mm -mm. You can say you terminate my job but stop there. Because if you add any other thing more than that, you are being God. You can terminate my job. I respect it because it's your company. But allow Abba to use another funnel to get the blessing for me. 
It's a revelation that has changed my life. Everything on earth, man, structure, systems are all funnels. All blessings. The popular hymn writer says, praise God from whom all blessings. Not praise CBN. Not praise all of the great financial houses in the world. Praise God. If your wealth comes from your job, you are in trouble. It must come from God through your office. God through your business. God through whatever value adding structures you have. But it must come from God. Are we together? Say my wealth. Please say it. My wealth comes from God. It comes through men. It comes through structures. It comes through systems. To me. So find peace. You called him. He didn't pick your call. Don't call again. Be patient. Because he is only a funnel. Prove that you believe he's a funnel by not disturbing him again. When you keep calling and say, sir, you changed my life. is proof that you are bringing one to run a parallel government with God. And his jealousy will fight both you and the person that you are trying to work with. The jealousy of God is the factor that makes him protective of everything that is exclusive God. Please sit down. Now, let's discuss the laws of kingdom wealth. The laws of kingdom wealth. Remember, we're dealing with the economic system of the kingdom. I'm being very methodical because I really want us to get something of substance. I'm trusting as desired by your pastor that God will shift all of us into a new dimension even in this area. In the name of Jesus. Please look up. Um, is it alright if I have two gentlemen? I like to use people. Please come. You stand here. You stand here. God bless you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you guys. Stand by my left one. Stand by my right. Watch this. For many years, pastor, there has been a very serious vendetta between men of God and business people as to whose perspective about the real formula for wealth is valid and should be followed. Here is the businessman teaching principles that, you know, make for wealth and abundance. From a business perspective, he went to business school, Harvard Business School, and all of that, and, he sh and this, these things have been proven. But here is a great man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman, saying, forget that nonsense. I prophesied over a billionaire. And in one night, he gave me a car, a house, and said every month he will be paying me salary. Now, I was saying, forget this. this. I look at him with all his teaching. Are you seeing anything? You see, so it's been a, it's been a contention for years. The business people said, forget about this pastor. He's the only one prospering. If you listen to him, you will be broke. And the pastor is saying, look, don't downplay the power of prophecy. Don't downplay the power of the realm of the spirit. And then both of them find out that there is a problem with their equation. The reason is because both of them are correct, but both of them are incomplete. The perspectives that they communicate were not designed to replace one another. It was supposed to complement one another. That both, listen, both the natural laws of wealth and the spiritual laws of wealth are together called the kingdom laws of wealth. Sit down, please. Do you understand what I'm sharing with you? Yes. Now watch this. Here is the difference. The spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the manifestation of resources, including finance. But it stops there. The natural and the business laws are responsible for the management systems and the multiplication. This is what makes wealth transgenerational. When you dwell here, you will always have sudden breakthroughs. But you will never have a systemic dimension of increase. You are up today, down tomorrow, one testimony in January, the next one December. That's not God's desire. The path of the just, he says, is as a shining light. The sun does not shine and disappear and comes back two, two hours later. It continues to brighten. 
Are we together? So I will pick on the spiritual laws and then we'll end for tonight. And then please do not miss tomorrow because somewhere in this meeting, something will leave heaven and come on your life that will shift you in the name of Jesus Christ. I know this. You, you, will, you will not know how changed you are until you step out of this place and then you will see doors open. When things happen, you will know what spiritual law was responsible for what. You will not just give God glory randomly and leave the part you should play. You know that this result was governed by my engaging the spiritual law. Are we blessed? Thank you guys. Thank you. So they are both called the kingdom laws. So the kingdom laws of wealth and abundance are separated into two. Number one, we have the spiritual laws. And then number two, we have the natural laws. Please write it down so that we'll discuss the spiritual laws briefly. Lend me a few minutes and we're done for tonight. Can you pray in the spirit while you're writing this? Hallelujah. Go ahead and pray. Shali Prakatoziata. Lord, you spoke well about 2020. I'm already seeing the shift. By the Spirit. Light of the world. You step down into darkness. Here's the prayer. Open my eyes. Let me see. You're the light of the world. You step down to my darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. One more time. You're the light of the world. You step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. Hallelujah. Please write it down. The first spiritual law. Now I'm going to say a few things that may disturb you. Just listen, just follow me. The first spiritual law of wealth and abundance, in my opinion, is not tithing. Listen very carefully. I believe in tithing. Tithing is a foundational spiritual law. But look up, please. The first spiritual law of wealth and abundance is called the law of absolute surrender. Write it down, please. Your tithing means nothing to God and nothing to destiny until God finds his space in your heart and in your life. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. When you want to do the business of wealth with God, he needs more than your money. He needs more than your business. He needs your heart. Proverbs 23 and verse 26. Proverbs 23, 26. Let me quote it. Okay, everyone please read. One, two, go. My son, uh -huh, give me thine heart and then let your eyes observe my ways. When I have your heart first, then you can understand my methodologies. I want your heart, not just your tithe, not just your offering, not just your sacrifice. It's amazing how we engage these things as though we are bribing God. God, here is my tithe. Make sure I see the devourer far from me. Make sure you bring me this quickly. I drop it. No, no. Your heart is the tray that all your offerings are received from. Listen very carefully. Your heart. So you can come out of an SUV that is hundreds of millions of naira worth and yet it does not move you because he's captured your heart. Please hear me. This is the one mistake with the prosperity gospel pastor. It does not seek to surrender the heart of that one who seeks to prosper. If God does not find your heart I don't care what you are doing about wealth. It's a total waste of time and will not bless the kingdom. Please understand this. 
my son, give me your heart, not your offering, your heart first. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Any money, any business that will take my heart from you, let it not come. We are still doing finance. Your heart. So it does not become a do or die affair. Pastor, people kill for money. Christians, kill for money. You took my money, I will never forgive you. What is mine is mine. I must eat my share of this. And you hear all those kinds of diabolic things. And after we say it, we water it down with tongues. It does not justify it. Listen, for someone here who wants to be trusted with the wealth of the kingdom, leave the issue of money. It is your heart. Listen, when you give your life to Christ, you really don't give him your heart. You receive his life. It is when you want to be used by God that you give him your heart. I know we say it generally and God understands what you are saying. But what happens in salvation is not giving your heart. You receive the life of God. That was a testament of John. This is the record that God has given us the way. And that life is in his son. Whoever hath the son hath eternal life. But then he says, I beseech you brethren by the message of God that ye offer when it has to do with laying down, is to position you to be used by God. Sir, I submit to you that many believers are not ready for the prayers they are praying. Lord, bless me. Lord, I promise I will not leave you. Money is powerful. There is a dangerous spirit behind money that if your heart is still with you, it will tear you like a lion. You cannot handle money when your heart is with God. Is with you the pride of life that comes with money it has nothing to do with being good or bad there is an effect of resources on a human being and it is only the surrendered nature of your heart the problem is because many people who are teaching about wealth are not blessed and and because they are not blessed they don't even know what they are saying Oh, God forbid that I own 10 estates. And that man has never given God 1 million. People give God offering of 100, 100 naira. And right after the service, they eat bonds of 2,000. Are we together? Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Why will a man be a multi... Now, I'm not talking about money. It's just a litmus test to reveal your heart. Ah! He said, I will not give God anything that will not cost me nothing. It's not about the money. It's the position of value. It's how much I see him lifted and honored. See, let me tell you sincerely, and I stand before the God of heaven. I have told God, anything I cannot give him, may it never come to me. Never! I'm not saying this just because I'm on stage preaching. Believe me. There is nothing I cannot give God. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. When you get to this state, you are ready to prosper. Are you saying that it's not about money? Because many people who want money want it to land on the tray of their lusts. And they want to run to the village to prove a point, to prove this. And God says, no, not my way. If it is my way, you first die before you come alive. Is God speaking to someone? In one minute, while you are seated, I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, you know the lost in my heart. Before I disappoint my own destiny, I pray that you take my heart. You take my heart. It all belongs to you. Please pray. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. Oh, 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 it all belongs to you. 
My son, give me your heart, not just your business. My daughter, give me your heart. When you give your heart, you give your pride too. When you give your heart, you give your, your tendency for being attached. Give me your heart. It's not a do or die affair. Lord, I love you more than money. I love you more than business. You have my heart. We're dealing wealth here. If most people touched on this before they began to teach on wealth, we will not have the emergence of lust-driven people who just want money and they stop coming to church when they are blessed. They disregard any grace when they are blessed. Not when he captures your heart. I've been captured by a love I can't explain. Now you have me and I'm forever changed. I've abandoned everything I've ever known. And I surrender. This life is not my own. I belong to you. I belong to you. It's a prayer. I belong to you. Huh. My life is not my own. To you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Please listen to me. I want you to take the issue of the surrender of your heart seriously to God. It is not only the key to wealth, it is the key to everything. God first, God above, God above. I can shut any business a thousand times to preserve his presence. No, I will shut ministry a thousand times to seek for him. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need you more and more. It's not a song, it's my life. Lord, I'm chasing after you. No matter what I have to do, I need you more and more. Listen down. This is where the incomplete prosperity gospel has destroyed men. You have it and we take it and our loss tears us into pieces. The more we have money, the more our pride grows. The more you have money, the more you want another wife. The more you have money, the more God becomes an option to join the queue in your life. You say, God, just wait. I'm busy now. I have checks to sign. Join the queue and I will give you an appointment just like I'm giving a minister. You just be patient and I will attend to you. So he says, my son, I know the tendencies that come with this cosmos. Give me your heart. I'm a better keeper of your heart than you. So when lust comes to enter your heart, you say it's too late. Go to heaven there. That's where he's kept my heart. Hmm. Can you look at a billion naira and walk away? Don't be quick to answer. Don't be quick to answer. Remember, we are sincere this night. Don't be quick to answer. A billion naira, no matter how much money you have in this world, a billion naira is something. Can you look at it and walk away and still say, I choose you? Not as a result of lack of exposure. You understand the gravity of what that billion can do to you and you still walk away and say, Lord, I love you that much. Can you back out of a contract because you saw the terms and you did not find the interest of God in it. And you say, Lord, I love you that much. When I was in one room and I told you I would never leave you, I meant it. Now that I'm in this palace, I will crush it down a thousand times to show the world that I am still with you. I tell you sincerely, the Spirit of God tells me this all the time. 
it is not because believers are not hard working it is not because believers are not innovative fundamentally our hearts are not with him so his jealousy cannot come to defend and protect you but after tonight someone's life is changing because for some you will you will go back this night and whilst preparing for tomorrow tonight you will carry your atm put it on the ground your checkbook put it on the ground are we watching now you will carry your contract put it on the ground be magnified, oh Lord, above my checkbook, above my bank account. You are highly exalted, and there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on you. Be magnified. Oh Lord, be my. You look at your business proposal and then you bring it before him. And you say, Lord, you are above it all. ATM never be confused as to who is Lord. My checkbook, I sign millions with you, but don't ever get used to my touching you. My heart has already touched one before you came, and it will remain so. Hmm. This is someone's service already, oh. This night as we are talking now, God is showing you why generationally nobody has been able to break the back of poverty in spite of the businesses you have. The, the points you have been accumulating to prove will never let God bless you. You have already planned to show your brother, show your pastor. I'm, I'm just patient now as if I cannot talk. Let, let this contract come. They will know my true color. God bless me and you will see and God says, see what? I'm already seeing it. I am Alpha Omega. Please do not think I'm just exciting you. I'm showing you why God will come and hold a person and vow that you must be blessed this year. There are things that people can do business with God. You are sitting in your house and you step into a realm of prepared blessings. Listen, there are times that God will bless your farm to produce grain. You will harvest, process before you eat. But there are times bread can come directly. They are called prepared blessings. You don't do anything about bread. You eat it straight. There are times an idea will come. But there are times money will come. God will bring somebody who likes you. And will vow as though charmed. Connecting his blessings to you. Listen, this man talking to you is not a stupid person. I know what I'm saying. I'm not just a preacher. I tell you respectfully. I have seen. Believe what I tell you. And you will watch your life rise. You will not climb a ladder. You will go on a lift. When you climb a ladder, you feel the pain. But when you are in a lift, it's the lift that takes the responsibility of taking you up. Life is not that hard. Our attachment is what has programmed it to be that hard. In the presence of interest, everybody looks like an angel. But God is the discerner of the hearts of men. In the presence of interest, everybody looks like he cannot kill. Who would have known that David would kill um, Uriah? You would have seen that young shepherd boy. That's the kind of gentleman every lady would want to marry. But there was death in his heart. Let me tell you, God loves everybody, but he doesn't trust everybody. Trust is not just, there is a proving, there is a track record. Please hear me, you are a businessman, forget contract now. We are coming to that one. These are the kinds of people that no divination and no enchantment can work upon them. Their allegiance and their heart for God is blood dripping. You talk about them in the secret, you are judged in the open. They don't pray, they are not aware. God has branded and vowed his jealousy upon their lives. The price is not giving him money. The price, even if you give Satan money, he will give you back. 
Because both of them are not looking for money. They are looking for your heart. But now, oh Lord, I see my wrong. That's what it means to be shifted. Heal my heart and show yourself strong. And knit my heart and with my song, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh Lord, be magnified. You know it is not God's yoke when it is killing you. He said, my yoke is easy. The school fees of your children is about to sink you in the ground. It's a sign that someone has added another yoke. Will you let him tonight be Abba? They are my children, so you maintain them. But tonight, you are not ashamed to say, Lord, the earth is yours. Including these children. Including my house rent. Where will I get 500,000 between now and next week? I'm in church, but my landlord is waiting. I know he's waiting. What does it take God to touch the heart of a man? Do you not know he's called the father of spirits? That every spirit is under his influence. We've just talked about one law. Listen, I learned this in ministry. You've heard me say, the Lord told me, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. God can take another man's prayer point and beg you to receive it. Because you are there giving your all to him. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. Saying, he didn't say touch not my man. <clears throat> the secret to be anointed is I have found my servant. I found David's sins. But it took many years to find my servant. Anything God gives me is his own. Truly speaking, it is own. You know, when people celebrate the hand of God and what he's doing, I am grateful. I truly am grateful. But God sees my heart, Pastor. I'm saying it here in the presence of everybody. I have no business building anything for myself. I am honored enough to represent his majesty. And I am secured enough in that. If he's killing you, find out whose load you are carrying because my yoke is easy could it be the load that your ego may have dropped on you the ashamedness to look like you are limited in yourself we always like to look like we are sufficient in ourselves and the bible tells us clearly that our sufficiency is of god hallelujah the first, this is just one law for one. The law of absolute surrender. We'll soon round up for tonight. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours. My heart is yours, it's yours, it's yours forever. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Please sit down. Can you give me five minutes? Is it all right if I use five minutes, Pastor? Let's hurry up.
So the law, the first law that I've shown you from scripture is the law of absolute surrender. This is what gives value to tithing. Now, the second law, the second spiritual law, do not forget about the sequence, our arrangement. The second law is called the law of tithing. Please look up. I know that there are so many debates in the body of Christ about tithing and so on and so forth. And I know that many people have answered that. That's not the idea. Tithing is true. It's in scripture. It is still required. The only thing that changed was the understanding. Not the giving. Hallelujah. Are we together? Tithing has nothing to do with money. Tithing is the law of open heavens. The assignment of tithing is not to give you money. The assignment of tithing is an ordinance that secures your heavens so that everything done under that open heavens will bless you. Are we together? I know that there have been many interpretations of Malachi chapter 3. You know, people have tried to approach it from a theological standpoint to trace it historically. That's not, you see, the thing about the word of God, listen, the thing about the word of God is that when the spirit of truth comes, the Bible says he will guide us into all truth. That means that following truth historically, geographically, um, archaeologically alone will limit us somewhere along the line. We will need the wisdom of God to make sense of what will not make sense to a natural man. So Malachi chapter 3 from verse 10. The Bible says, will a man rob God? Whatever the case is talking about stealing. Are we together? Will a man rob God? He says, wherein have we robbed you? And then he says, in tithes and offerings. And then he says, please give it to us, Malachi chapter 3. From verse 10, he says, bring ye all the tithes into my storehouse that there may be meat in my house. And then from that point, seven prophetic blessings follow. And these are the blessings of a tither. Number one, if I will not open the windows of heaven. Do you know what happened the last time the windows of heaven was opened? When the windows of heaven were opened, rain fell, bread fell, hailstones fell, from heaven to destroy 185,000 people in a night. Many things happen when the heavens are open. Even Jesus walked for 30 years under a closed heaven. He began his ministry when his heavens opened. The word under an open heavens. The word under a closed heaven. The, the logos of God was under a closed heaven until his heavens were opened. So tithing, number one, if I will not open the windows of heaven. Number two, pour you out a blessing. Many of you who follow Dr. Kenneth Copeland very much and the Word of Faith movement, you would have had a very intelligent exegesis on what this means. Ideas, concepts, insights. Is that true? The blessing. If God grants us grace, hopefully we'll, we'll talk a bit about it maybe tomorrow. I will tell you what I believe the blessing is. Um, the first thing I will tell you is the blessing has nothing to do with money. In fact, God does not give people physical things as blessings. Anything that is of the blessing is spiritual. And you will know why tomorrow. Praise the Lord. So the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Please keep that scripture there. Um, being made a curse for us, he said, for it is written... Cost is everyone that hangs upon the tree that the blessing of Abraham, notice, the blessing of Abraham is not money. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the ability to be reckoned righteous by reason of believing his report. That's the blessing of Abraham. There are blessings of Abraham. The blessing of Abraham is his ability to be imputed to be righteous on account of his believing God. Abraham believed God. It was credited to him as righteousness. We now, like faithful Abraham, we believe God and we receive righteousness. That is the blessing of Abraham. It now qualifies us to receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. That is what the Bible calls the blessing. 
The blessing is a dimension of the operation of the Holy Spirit that is responsible. It has been, we have received all kinds of interpretations about it. I don't want to go ahead of myself. The business people call it the law of attraction. It is the blessing. Business people have called it because they have studied the operation of the blessing and they have seen that it contains magnetic properties. And so they have coined names. They have found out that those who carry it behave like magnets. And so all kinds of business names came out. Money magnet, the law of attraction. All of those are an attempt to explain a dimension, a force-like possibility that can rest upon a man, that can attract circumstances, program scenarios, attract men, maneuver situations, until your life looks like the Garden of Eden. More on that, just, just to, to clear the air on that. So, tithing is very important. If I will not open the windows of heaven, number two, pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Number three, I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Number four, he shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Number five, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before her time in the field. And then 12 says, all nations shall call you blessed. Number six, and then seven, you shall be a delightsome land. Is the word Beulah. You shall be Beulah and Hephzibah. God's delight. That's favor there. Are we together? Desirable. When you are a faithful tither, it opens your heavens and grants you access to these blessings, to these truths. Now, let's hurry up quickly. The third, um, the third spiritual law. I'm just trying to tie this up. I pleaded for five minutes. Forgive me. The first spiritual law is the law of giving. There are many dimensions of it. The law of giving. And the law of giving is tied to the law of seed time and harvest. Are we together? Genesis, when you read chapter 8 now and verse 22. Whilst the earth remains, seed time and harvest, summer and winter, cold and heat, day and night shall not cease. So we know that programmed in the earth. And remember the prophet said, as for the earth, out of it comes bread. He said the increase of the earth is for all and even the king is fed by what is of the earth. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest. Are we together now? So we know that there is the law of giving. Now look up please. There are many dimensions to givings with their different blessings allocated. I may not have the time to go into all those details, but I want to tell you three kinds of giving that open you up to wealth and abundance. Now, there are many kinds of seeds. First fruits, worship offering, prophet offering. All of them have their allocated blessings. But for the purpose of rising to the wealthy place, there are three of them that I will show you very quickly. I'm not going to explain them much. I will just say them. Ready? Number one, kingdom investments. Kingdom investments. Psalm 122 and verse 9, NIV. Psalm 122 and verse 9, NIV. It says, for the sake of thy house, I desire thy good or I desire thy prosperity. For the sake of thy house, I desire thy prosperity. Kingdom investments is a powerful... Sorry. For the sake of the house of the Lord, I will seek your prosperity. Look up, please. I tie my pursuit for resources as a reflection of my passion to see kingdom come. Kingdom investments. You are so passionate about the house of God, you have made it a responsibility to communicate benevolence, to bring financial resources that meet the needs in the house of God. Without coercion, not necessarily as a corporate demand as stated by a church. 
by the grace of God Almighty, and I'm saying it only because I'm teaching this, I have a list of mission agencies. I have a list of many things that have to do with the kingdom. And consistently, some of them don't know me. They don't know me from anywhere. We will never meet till Jesus comes. And my kingdom responsibility. Did you know that giving to the house of the Lord is not a favor you are doing God? Is part of the kingdom responsibility. The challenge is most times because of the way we harass men of God. They are afraid to tell you it's so. So you don't think they are being manip you are, they are manipulating you into providing resources. Non-Christians know this. They practice it. I, 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 do you understand what I'm saying? They know that it is part and parcel of your kingdom responsibility to provide financial resources for kingdom advance. He gave them the gold in Egypt because he would need it for the building of the tabernacle. But Satan quickly made them to build an image with it. Kingdom investments. That you are in this church now. And, and I'm saying it truthfully. You, you discern my heart. And I'm glad I'm the one saying it, not your pastor. So you don't think that you're being manipulated. You can sit down and say, look, I, Lord, show me something that I need to provide in your house. That a month, a quarter, a year should not come without a substantial amount of your giving. Committed with understanding and without coercion for the sake of the Lord's house. I will be responsible for providing these drinks. Let it be a personal commitment. Lord, let it be my kingdom investment. I don't care the committee. Just let me know how much. I will do this because I love God sincerely. You can do it out of coercion. You can do it because you want to be known. You have your blessing there and then. That clap is your blessing. The Bible warns against the obsession to do things before men. It didn't say you'll be rewarded. It said whatever they do to you at that point, for knowing what you have done is your reward. Kingdom investment. Number two. I'm talking on giving. I hope you understand the sequence. Do you understand? So the law of giving, and I'm giving you three. Number one is your kingdom investment. Number two, prophet offering. Hmm. This one has brought a lot of problem in the body of Christ. And I submit to you that we men of God have added in no small way to damaging the validity of this because prophet offering means the man of God. And sometimes because that one comes directly to the man, he will manipulate it with an extra passion. You see the passion with which that one is communicated. You will know that this passion is not just a regular desire to teach truth, but a manipulative insistence to see that I extract something from your pocket. But just because people have misused this truth does not mean it is not so. Let me tell you the truth. One of the ways that the bowels of a man's grace is open towards you is by discerning and sowing into that grace with understanding. Many of you may wonder why you have not received from your pastor. In all fairness, I'm being truthful to you. It is because you may see him as a pastor, you know, the day you discern that this man is not just my pastor. He's not just a man of God. I have seen the buffet of graces at work in him. And I come with understanding, sir. I bring this to you as my prophet with understanding. You will be surprised. He may even laugh and say, God bless you. It doesn't matter. Prophet's offering. The Bible says, listen to me. It says, he that gives a prophet a cup of water. It doesn't mean a cup of water literally. If you carry a cup of water to a prophet, you are greedy. Are we together? A cup of water is symbolic of any contribution to quenching his thirst. There's no need... The man is going to use the money. So there's no need being superstitious about what will happen with the money. The prophet's offering, look at me. Listen, listen, listen. Can we, in the name of honesty, you remember I'm working on extra time, five minutes. Don't laugh too much so I'll have the concentration to just finish it. <laughs> prophet's offering, just because a man of God receives, it doesn't mean he's going to vanish and go anywhere. The prophet's offering is your discernment. Whatever he does with that money is none of your business. 
Yours is to know that you have engaged the Lord that freely. Listen, when it was time for Isaac to bless his sons, he said, make me venison. Don't come and kneel down in front of me. I will tell you, go away. Make me venison. And why do I need venison? Because I need delight so that my grace can flow. Listen, not because that there is an atmosphere that allows the release of grace. Make me venison. Let my soul find delight. And in it, I want to swear a blessing upon you. When it was time to go and see Samuel, the challenge they had, Saul and the servants, was that they did not have anything in their hand for the man of God. And the servant said, I have something. I have some shekels. Let's go. And when they met Samuel, he blessed them. And, 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 and Saul's life changed. Prophet's offering has been abused, but it is a, it's a weapon of mass destruction to poverty. When you find a real grace with understanding, I can tell you, to any man of God you see that has been genuinely blessed will tell you. Some may be honest to open up and tell you, and others, because of our propensity for dishonor, they will quietly shield their stories. But let me tell you sincerely, there will always be a time in a man's... Remember, everyone blesses according to his riches in glory. Praise the Lord. If this man is a billionaire and he's quickly looking for 1,000 to give somebody begging and he says, help me, will you give him? You will give him with speed because you know that he will not give you back 1,000. This is a billionaire who can change your life and he's saying, um, I don't have 1,000. You say, ah, daddy, please. Because when he's giving you, it becomes an insult for him. For his name's sake, he cannot give you back 1,000. Are we together? When you give a man of God money and he gives you back money, he cheated you. When you sow a seed, there must be something that is beyond the three-dimensional realm that is programmed upon your life. I do not teach you error. I teach you the truth of God's word. The last for tonight, let me close my Bible. It's called seed faith. Seed faith is not a word of faith concept. Seed faith is true from scripture. Seed faith is based on the power of resurrection. Please look at me. Let me explain to you. The only thing that did what Jesus did is a seed. That you put a seed in the ground. It dies, yet it comes back to life unassisted. Look at this. The life-giving component of every seed is in its death. So when you sow, you are burying the problem you are sowing and resurrecting the solution you need. Listen, let me show you a deep mystery. The Bible says that it is only your seed that is able to carry another body. So I sow grief and I say this pain that I have in my family, I bury it and I resurrect joy, another body. It's a mystery. It's not just sowing, it's not just tying what you want to a seed and sowing it. No. The principle of seed faith works. I want corn. Is that true? And then I take the seed, frail as it is. Some even have holes there. I sow it in tears, but I don't reap in tears. Because my seed is about to carry another body. And the Bible says there are different kinds of bodies. There are some terrestrial. There are some celestial. I can sow money and reap correct children. Not just a child. A child who is like a nation. A seed brought that child. I can sow money. The reason why money is the most preferred is number one because of its portability two its usability and three it is the greatest reflection of your value and your sacrifice so i can sow money father in the name of jesus i am tired of joblessness and i've been throwing money 
just because I saw other people giving, but now I know that anything that is alive and I don't like it, I can kill it by sowing it. When I sow it, I kill that problem. Listen, anything that enters the ground is dead. You can have a problem in your place of work and kill that problem with a seed. This man hates me. He wants to destroy me. He has vowed that I will never rise. Carry that issue. Tie it to a seed. As the seed dies, there is a mystery that kills that problem too. Nobody in my family rises. Carry that pattern. Tie it to a seed. Put it in the earth. The same principle of resurrection. And notice, except a corn of wheat dies, it abides alone. So when it resurrects, the other version of what you want comes with multiplication. Many people have not been able to explain the mystery of seed faith. A seed is powerful because it did what Jesus did. Jesus died and rose again, not with the body he died with. When he rose again with that body, there was no blood. He was being sustained by another life. Listen, you can kill any issue by sowing it to the earth. This earth you see is not just a ground. The earth is is a mysterious that is a discussion for another day please hear what i'm telling you someone vows in his office and says on over my dead body for you to leave you can pray you can engage this truth carry that issue put it on your seed like a tray bring it to church that's why it is dangerous to steal money in church because you don't know what someone is trying to bury listen when you catch somebody who is a thief in church, you are, you are not supposed to quarrel the person. You are supposed to find mercy for the person quickly. Because someone is carrying his pattern of divorce every year, bringing it. Someone is carrying jam that he has failed 10 years. And while they are, as you pick it without letting it die, you are carrying it on yourself. Listen, these are spiritual truths. I tell you the truth. Let's pray. Please stand. Light of the world, you step down into darkness. Open my eyes, let me see. light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes listen when you engage these spiritual laws the law of surrender the law of tithing the law of giving there are many kinds of givings but when you are tired of where you are these are the three dangerous weapons the house of God your prophet and the earth there are three that bear witness do not forget the earth is a mystery of advantage listen to what I'm telling you you can pick a seed don't just throw you this is what our fathers used to say rap expectation you, you, you know, they just said it their way. I'm telling you the African way. Wrap anything, including trouble. Wrap it on that seed. And say, Lord, I am tired of this trouble in my family. As it dies, that except the seed cannot die and the trouble remains. No. Those who understand this have killed many issues without knowing why the issue died. They are givers. So God in his mercy tied one problem troubling them with one seed they are sowing. And they just tied it. That's it. Are you shifting already? Now listen to me. We are going to pray. There are three spiritual blessings that happen to you immediately you fulfill the spiritual laws. Let me list them quickly. Number one, 
is favor. The first proof that you have honored these spiritual laws is favor. What is favor? Loyalty of men towards you. Not money, not opportunities. The real proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men. Because when you get their hearts, you get their resources. You get the opportunities tied to them. Listen, a life without favor can be traced as a life that has not honored these spiritual laws. Favor. Number two, wisdom. I'm discussing the return channels quickly with you now. Number one is favor. And as I'll be showing you in this conference, there are only two ways money comes to your hand. If you ever put your hand in your pocket and you see money there, there are only two ways it came. Favor and value. That's it. There's no other way again. Favor. What is favor? God lifting men to bless you. Money arrives by favor. Favor coming to you. Number two is wisdom. And wisdom is very important. Doth not wisdom cry. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth, and honor. Yea, durable riches and righteousness. Wisdom. Divine strategies. Divine direction. Coming at the instance of your honor to spiritual laws. Number three is the activation of the blessing. The blessing. So number one is favor. Number two is wisdom number three is the blessing i've told you the blessing works like a charm i'm sorry to have to use that but that's the only way i will help you understand a charm programmed upon your life by the wisdom of the spirit it works like a magnet this is how it works it is territorial in context when you step into a territory what happens is that the blessing starts calling everybody who has what you need let's look at how it works look at me have you ever passed a strong magnet on sand when there are nails it's laborious to pick them one by one just pass the magnet and if that magnet is you that's how all kinds of things follow you watch this because you carry the blessing you step into a city and God can postpone a man's travel because he must meet you that's how it works they work like coincidences, but we know they are manipulated. There is a name God is called when it comes to releasing the blessing. He's called the father of spirits. Because it's a waste to worry about bodies. Everybody is only hosting a spirit. So God can touch the spirit that can bless you. You see that? I came into your city, let me tell you sincerely and respectfully. I stepped into this city and see if you listen to what i'm telling you you will go on a retreat if there is a single 24 hour without favor coming on you i hope you know that favor is not breakthrough if it happens only once it's not favor the proof of favor is consistency regardless of territory and regardless of the men who are used to act it out I submit to you and forgive me if I sound like pride. If in a single 24 hour favor does not come, I will go on a retreat. Something is wrong. He daily loads us. It's, it's, it's not a proverb. Someone while you are standing here, God is going to be speaking to you. For some of you, this thing I said about seed faith, may just I'm not saying you should sow. But it will stick to your heart and stop you from sleep this night. And say, this is it. If you want your life to become like 2019, 2018, and then people will say all kinds of things. That's how God wants it. That's not how God wants it. He says, there remaineth a rest for the people of God. Any day you choose to make it becomes your today. Every day remains today. Every day remains today. The day you are angry and say, Lord... I want to bury this face of my life and resurrect another face. That becomes your today. Hallelujah. The blessing. I have seen this work in my life. The blessing. The blessing. Attracting people. Attracting resources. Attracting circumstances. 
every good thing that is about to happen, God makes it wait until you are there because of what is on you. That's why I told you it works like a charm. Someone is having an urge to bless. It's your face you will see in the dream. There are people today who bless me, who saw my account numbers in dreams. Exact account number. You get up and sow the seed. I submit to you. I'm teach, I, I don't want to lie to you. We're rounding up. But I will tell you just one testimony. A group of business people met me one time and they said, sir, we want to make you a non-executive board member in our company. You are not going to do anything. We just want your grace connected to this business. I said, what does this mean? They said, whatever it is, we have agreed. This is it. Have this document. And I went back and I said, what is this? It's called the blessing. In your city here, one time, a group of real estate people met me and said, Apostle, we covenanted with God that everywhere we build an estate on earth, we will build a space for you there. Listen, don't think that this man talking to you is just talking nonsense. I was in Nairobi a few months ago and a real estate company uh, in partnership with some leaders that had worked with U.S. government gave me five houses. One, two, three, four, five. I said, what will I do with it? I'm in Nigeria and I love my country. You have it. If you do whatever you want to do. When blessings refuse to leave you, the blessing is on you. Forgive me if I sound proud. This is not my, it's, it's not my character. But I need to challenge you. Because sometimes, until you know that this thing is reachable, is attainable. Hallelujah. Where you will lay up gold as dust. It's, they are not proverbs. And yet, we have not finished our discussion. We are going to pray. Listen to me. Now, let me... While we are praying, if God touches your heart and you feel like coming to connect with any seed, is it alright if you can use the altar? Praise the Lord. I, I'm not saying you should do it out of any coercion. No. I, I just felt in my heart that somebody should connect. You have to connect, connect a seed to your prayers. The Bible says, listen, it told, it told, um, it told Cornelius, he says your prayer and your giving, not just your prayer alone. I fear God, I serve the God of heaven, I will not come here and deceive you. You called it a mega shift, that's why you brought me. That means if you don't shift, I failed. Hey. Hallelujah. We are going to pray and while you pray, whatever it is, you can have the agreement, you and your wife, you and your family, please do not be under pressure. But let this altar serve as an earth that you can say, Lord, this can't be it. God is so much bigger than this. Lift your voice, everybody, and begin to pray. This can't be it. My God is so much bigger than this. He's calling you deeper, 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 deeper. He's calling you deeper. I'm not just saying to come out. We're praying. Remember, deeper, deeper. Now, where you are, lift your voice and begin to pray. Please don't do anything emotional and don't be under any kind of pressure. Please do not act emotionally. We're we are, we are serious. This is serious business. Please give me volume and let's pray. Someone lift your voice here at the Transforming Church. Begin to pray. Lord, it's time to shift me. Thou shall arise. Have my desire for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. Oh, 
Shali barakato salabrande ke shaliata. Shila paru salanda teka shola brakata. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. This can be it. God is so much bigger than this. Hallelujah. Listen, two prayer points and we're done tonight. Number one, Father, this dimension and this realm of my life, I bury it this night. This night. This realm of lack. This realm of having today and not having tomorrow. This realm of struggling over what to eat is distracting my focus. I can't pay attention serving you. It's causing trouble between me and my wife, me and my children. My children cannot go to good schools. The Bible says his divine power has given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. He's calling us deeper. Deeper. Grace. Hallelujah. Last prayer point. I'd like you to lift your voice and obtain grace. Grace to be a practitioner of these things. It says, now that ye know these things, happy are you when you do them. It's not enough to know. You must obtain the grace to do. Lift your voice and pray. Grace to surrender all. Grace to be a faithful tither. Is someone praying? Grace to be a giver. An investor. In the kingdom. Grace. Is someone praying? Shali parakatosh kele brandaka, empretos kopre shali saramata, e prekete lekete sheleketa. Grace, oh God, in the name of Jesus, grace to be a giver, not careless giving, not coerced giving, not manipulated giving, giving with understanding. You have shown me how to bury pain through my seed, how to bury danger through my seed. How to bury tragedies through my seed. Give my seed another body. Pashepari katos kariata. Hallelujah. Listen, please. By the grace of God Almighty, I'm still here tomorrow. Just two, um, just two announcements and then I'll step down for your dear pastor. Please, I told you this teaching is not, is, is not just for the baptizing church. Please. Whether it is to the, I'm sorry, the transforming church. Now listen, whether it is your neighbor, your family members... You have someone that is running around saying, I'm looking for money, leave me. Please plead with him and say, I want to reduce wasting your time. Come and sit down tomorrow. One thing is needful. Are we together now? Even if there is no space, if you will sit on the roof tomorrow, please come and sit. I, I really mean it. This is not just trying to attract. As you are here now, it's paining you because there are people you know should hear this thing. Please, what if it's to use your vehicle to bring them, I'd like you to come with your heart open. Let all roads lead to the transforming church. That you come and sit down, whether it is inside or outside. Come with a notebook. Don't put something that you pocket and stroll around. This is your destiny. Come with your heart enlarged. Number two, if your pastor allows, then I would want to plead with you. Please, I want you to write down every financial concern that has become a mountain for you. I'd like you to come with it tomorrow as the Lord grants grace. Tomorrow we are going to see whether God has lost his power over your finances. By the grace of God Almighty, I'll be laying my hands on this request 
And if God is God and God has called us, you will watch that mountain go down before you. So please don't forget two. Number one, don't come alone. Come with your heart. Even if it's to come by two o'clock and sit down praying. Some of you will not be able to sleep this night because it's serious business. You will go back and the Holy Ghost will say, wake up. Now it's too early to sleep. You will pray these things one by one. And then number two, come with your request. Write them. For those of your colleagues who are abroad, I'm sure that the church's Facebook, the social media platforms, you can be able to just post it there and will collate everything and let the God of heaven who has vowed a mega shift for this church come and honor his name tomorrow. Some of you are in all kinds of financial issues. Write them down. Bring them. That the God of heaven who has vowed to shift you, I will be sharing with you a few things. And then there will be an impartation tomorrow. There is a grace. Listen to me. There is a grace that will come from heaven. Rest on your life. And like the angel held Peter, you will watch doors open by their own. As you are moving. In the name of Jesus. For all of you who have come with seeds here, I declare by the Spirit of God. As you lay them down, pick up something greater than the seed you sow. In the name of Jesus Christ. I give your seed another body by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I decree and declare, some of you before tomorrow evening, before the session, you will return with strange testimonies. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for everyone, as you return home, you will not only return excited. You will... Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, my son, Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you